my dear dear friends this is Daisuke and I very very much hope that this video finds you well and in very very good spirits very very good spirits wherever you are in the world and I would very much like to continue on with the wonderful viewer questions that you so kindly submitted to this channel a few months back it's been my great honor and privilege uh, to be able to go through these uh, each of them one at a time and as many as possible so thank you so much that brings us to the next question or set of questions from uh, the next viewer uh, who is and please pardon me because I I may get this wrong the name is spelled it's either a lowercase l or it's an uppercase I I can't tell because of the typeface that is used on the YouTube uh, the YouTube uh, interface so I'm not sure exactly <clears throat> what it is so again it could be a lowercase l or a an uh, uppercase i a n n a so l a n n a or i a n n a again please I apologize I might get this wrong but I will I will s assume the lowercase l form Lana but if I get that incorrect Iana or Lana please correct me in the comments if you are watching my dear friend once again my deepest apologies but I will say Lana for now Lana or Iana so hello it's nice to see you and I hope this video finds you well and your set of questions are really wonderful and they are did you have some cinephile friends when you were a student was your wife shared some cinema passion with you as well have you ever spoken or present films in the class when you were in college your knowledge and open mind in many varieties of cinema from pop to art are rare your patience and your modesty are unique but you really are too humble I really think you deserve all the praises you can get have you ever talked about you meant me to yoni nemuritai to sleep so as to dream 1986 directed by kaizo hayashi and sore kara 1985 and then by yoshimitsu morita based on the novel by natsume soseki i wonder if they are available on disc i have seen them in the 80s and never seen them since wow so thank you so much thank you thank you so much that is that that's really wow thank you so much um I, i'm uh, you you're very very kind very very kind indeed um so let me just go through these questions that you've set forth one at a time here so the first is do you have some cinephile friends when you were a student so Yes, when I was a student, I had uh, a number of friends that were very into film, very much. They were so intelligent, so passionate, and I learned so much from them, um, each in uh, their own way. Uh, were, um, um, and um, they were talking about certain f uh, areas or realms or fields of cinema, and so I would just be listening to the conversation, absorbing all the, the pieces of information and just uh, was reveling in the, the passion that they were showing. Each was, they were so passionate. I, I remember in particular, um, uh, or, you know, I friends and acquaintances, shall we say. And so uh, I had a lot of acquaintances um, and a lot of people that I met to uh, maybe in passing or maybe we, there was just some circumstances where uh, we were uh, somehow uh, maybe with a group of people and we're just talking and just listening to these conversations about all sorts of films it was amazing really amazing and I'm so fortunate too that I was able or I am able to keep in touch with one particular friend uh, from my university days even now so I've lost touch with uh, everyone except one person uh, and so uh, from my university days and so yeah, he is a uh, a wonderful wonderful friend and he is so passionate and he teaches me 
so much from his perspective on various uh, forms of cinema, we have a lot of overlap in terms of what we personally like and uh, where there is, uh, and uh, uh, outside of that realm of overlap, he also teaches me so much every time we meet. Uh, I haven't been able to meet him because of the current world health crisis, but maybe one day, you know, we can meet again uh, for uh, drinks and a meal. Um, it's on me if you're watching, my dear friend. And so we can talk about cinema and life. But uh, So yes, that's the first question. And then the second question is, uh, was do, uh, does your wife share some cinema passion with you as well? So she and I, and indeed our whole family, yes, we do watch uh, movies together on occasion. Maybe not to the extent, or let me put it this way, we don't necessarily watch all the films, say, that I speak about on this channel. So we don't watch like the, the Criterion Collection releases together or anything of that sort. Also because I think, um, for instance, my wife isn't necessarily into films that maybe have scenes of intense violence, for instance. And uh, while I might have enthusiasm for films that have certain intense scenes in them, uh, maybe that type of thing isn't her cup of tea. And so instead of those sorts of films, maybe she and my family uh, will watch uh, films that uh, all of us can enjoy. And uh, maybe they're on TV or they're showing, or uh, oftentimes that might be, say, Japanese animation films like the uh, Ghibli film, Studio Ghibli films, or or uh, other films that are broadcast on television, and and the like. My wife really likes Disney movies, and so uh, we uh, will occasionally watch uh, Disney animated films, uh, and so that's something that uh, I think uh, we as a family can enjoy. And then uh, every now and again, my children will ask me about films that maybe I have a maybe personal interest in, shall we say. And so that will give me an opportunity to begin the conversation about uh, some of the other films that I really enjoy as well. My family understand that I'm very into uh, this type of 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 a cinema journey, as it were, and so they're very understanding in that respect. But uh, as far as, say, watching films, I have to be, I usually, um, well, let me put it this way, I, I don't expect my entire family to love every single film that I do, and so um, I, uh, but I want to share uh, in the experience with them as much as possible. So wherever there is uh, something that we all can watch, I'm all for that. And Incidentally, my younger son lately is really getting into uh, Spider-Man and Spider-Man movies. And so we're watching a lot of Spider-Man movies. Uh, and that's a, a lot of fun for us. And in fact, my family, uh, are uh, that becomes a sort of an event, family event moment when we can watch a Spider-Man movie on the main TV in the separate room. So that's a lot of fun. So, uh, and it brings me back to the memories of watching uh, the Spider-Man movies in the theater, you know, the Sam Raimi films in particular. And I remember, I remember for instance, uh, Spider-Man 3 in the movie theater. It was a packed movie theater and it was in New York at the time if I remember correctly and it was just people were laughing and it was just it was it, it was fun. It was so much fun. But in any event um, uh, so that thank you so much for that. The next question is have you ever spoken or presented films in the class when you were in college? So yes so I did <clears throat> excuse me I did take a number of film studies classes or classes that were um, involving film. And uh, even in high school, before I entered university, in high school, I did projects that uh, sometimes involved presenting uh, films to the group. And so I remember in high school, uh, we were in English class, we were talking about the novel Ethan Frome. And so when I was reading Ethan Frome, um, and if you know the work, uh, you'll know or uh, the words droning querulously. 
So I've never been able to forget that phrase or that type of combination of words droning querulously because my English teacher was so enthusiastic about those words. And I thank her very much for that great enthusiasm about that work, Ethan Frome. But over the course of reading Ethan Frome during high school, I, in my mind, began to find associations and connections of a thematic and perhaps uh, plot-like structure between the story of Ethan Frome and the film directed by Alfred Hitchcock called Psycho. And so I, I fashioned in my head, and in fact it ended up being a type of project on Ethan Frome, and I presented my argument for why I thought there were connections between Ethan Frome and Psycho. And that involved showing clips of the film Psycho. Now, in my mind and in my own perception, because in, I'd grown up watching Hitchcock films and Psycho, and I thought, based on my own subjective experience, I thought that everyone knew Psycho. Uh, gosh, was I mistaken, because when I presented this and involved showing clips of Psycho, including some really uh, dramatic scenes from the film Psycho, I uh, unintentionally scared a number of the other students, the high school students uh, in the class, and I remember one, one uh, other person in the class in, in particular was maybe just screaming, and she she couldn't look at the screen and I or the TV and just oh, I can't. It was it was like a, watching a, a sudden a scary horror film scene in uh, showing it in an English class one sunny afternoon, and so I uh, to this day I'm very. Uh, I'm very apologetic about that. I, I, I it taught me a very valuable lesson about how uh, maybe not everyone in the world has seen uh, 1960s Psycho. So uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I really apologize very much to that particular person, uh, and I apologize afterwards. But I don't think, uh, I, I don't think my apology was enough, and I really should <laughs> should apologize again one of these days if such opportunity presents itself. Uh, I don't know if it'll uh, ever happen directly, but uh, let me say again, uh, in the off chance that such person is watching, I deeply, deeply apologize. Truly, I do. It was not my intention to, to do that, to scare. Uh, it was simply my intention to try to draw connections between Psycho and Ethan Frome. But um, uh, yes, uh, even uh, you know, such intentions can go uh, terribly, terribly wrong, and so I deeply apologize for that. Truly, I do. Um, and uh, let me also say, too, that when I entered college, I also took, as I said, a number of film studies courses. And I remember one course, um, I, had, I was so excited because we were focusing in. I, I was assigned the topic of mise-en-scene, I think. And it was mise-en-scene in the context of the film, again, Hitchcock, Vertigo. Now, I love Vertigo. I love this film, Vertigo, and I've loved it ever since I was uh, I was growing up, including when I was a student. I just I would watch that. I remember after the restoration or during the restoration of the film Vertigo, I went to see it to the th uh, in the theater a number of times, and I was shocked when I heard the the echo of the the gunshots at the very start of the film, and the. I got the VHS tape of it, you know, with the orange, the bright orange cover and th and the like, and so, and then later the DVD with the same orange, etc. But uh, uh, in this particular class in university now, I was given the great opportunity to talk about mise-en-scene and vertigo and, and selecting a few examples. And so the examples that I chose involved the place in vertigo, which is a type of restaurant club called Ernie's and it has these red uh, tapestry like wallpapering uh, and these rooms and the mirrors and I was trying to express the idea that even in a seemingly um, innocent uh, place like this restaurant bar setup uh, that we get from uh, some of the opening moments of the film even in such a situation, the mise-en-scene presents itself in a way that there is use of color and the use of very conspicuous use of color. Uh, red, uh, green against red, if you know the character of, uh, uh, played by Kim Novak, who makes her appearance here in this 
uh, a spectacular fashion with her uh, the, the the dress uh, Edith Head and and the way she uh, approaches when the music occurs and this is the first moment of the uh, of uh, Scotty the main character played by uh, James Stewart first seeing uh, this person played by Kim Novak and so the Madeline and so the uh, and I was my theme was of the of the presentation in the class was to talk about this particular moment and uh, specifically because I was trying to suggest that even in this innocent moment there's the way in which the mise-en-scene creates confusion and after Scotty has seen Madeline uh, with Gavin Elster they walk through a set of corridors to leave the restaurant and the mirrors and the corridors are such a way they seem to be weaving in and out of space and time it's a very quick almost fleeting moment but I was trying to suggest that even in this particular space the film is creating havoc with space and time and this is an example of where these sorts of playing havoc with space and time occur elsewhere uh, in the film and I think it links to the theme of the film Vertigo which is a type of chaos uh, that can emerge almost abruptly and without warning uh, in many ways which is one of the great things or the great powerful and poetic things about this film Vertigo uh, but yes so uh, that isn't maybe another example of uh, presenting about films in college I don't I don't think I my presentation was that impressive in fact but uh, um, it was something that that uh, I was so excited about uh, because I was again given the opportunity to at least speak a little bit about vertigo um, and let's see uh, then you say here your knowledge and open mind are in many varieties of cinema from pop to art are rare your patience and your modesty are unique but you really are too humble I really think you deserve all the praises you can get uh, you're very very kind thank you thank you so much you know, I'm not in any way uh, a, I'm not an expert or an academic or a scholar or a reviewer or a pro or professional anything like that that just uh, and I'm mean, really just how should I put it I enjoy my cinema journey and I I realize that my limitations are quite immense and I have to try to break down those limitations as much as possible but uh, it's uh, it is impossible for me to to uh, uh, you know to well, let me say that I, I too, I recognize very much that I have uh, so many uh, limits and uh, I have a lot of shallow outtakes on a lot of things, cinema and otherwise. And so I have to uh, either try to acknowledge those or just try to move on the best as I can. But when it comes to cinema, uh, I really try to take each moment or each film as a type of of engagement or learning experience and and whether it, it changes my life in the long run I mean that's not necessarily a point but for me the point is is will, how does it how am I able to engage with it that's always the key question for me um, and uh, I don't have to be able to engage with the entire thing but even if there is one or two moments within the space of a film even those moments alone I think will make it worthwhile so um, but as I say, I'm always trying to learn and just trying to uh, uh, better myself. I, I don't think I'm I'm successful, but uh, and uh, I don't know if I'll be able to be successful any time in the future. But uh, in any event, it's it's all about the cinema journey for me. But thank you so much for that very kind set of words. I really, really am. Um, thank you, thank you so much. And then you say, have you ever talked about Yume Miru Yo ni Nemuri Tai uh, and Sorekara? Uh, I wonder if they are available on disc. I've seen them in the 80s and never seen them since. So I haven't spoken about these, but I do have them. I have both of them on, on disc, uh, in fact. And so um, Sorekara is uh, somewhere in this room. I haven't been able to find it, actually, but it's, it is here. I'll try to find it later after this video is over. But Yumemiru Yoni Nemuritai is right here. In fact, let's see. Actually, I just took it out. Yes, here it is. This is it. So this is on disc here. So Sorekara you could actually get on disc in Japan. Uh, it's a Japanese disc. 
um, but uh, no subtitles, unfortunately. But uh, it is available at least in Japan on disc. Yumemiru yo Ninamuritai is right here. Uh, this is a little bit of a different issue. This is, I think, out of print in Japan, and so you can try to find it, but it's, I think, pretty difficult. And uh, hopefully it might get a release, or maybe hopefully I'm wrong and it is back in print. But in any event, um, as far as I recall, at least at this point in time, this is out of print. But it's a shame. Um, and this, even if one is able to get this, this doesn't have any subtitles or anything. So it's a, it's a Japanese disc DVD that, uh, as of now, is out of print as far as I understand it. But this is a, what, these films that you mentioned, Sorekara and uh, Yume Miru Yo Nyamuri Tai. Wow, wow, yes. Um, I am so inspired by this comment. And in fact, I've received a number of other comments in the past uh, about um, uh, about this particular work, uh, the Hayashi work. Uh, and so I was so thrilled when I received those comments in the past. And I'm thrilled now that I'm receiving this comment from you here as well. Uh, yes, yes, these are uh, incredible, special works. Um, and I have this Yubemiru Yoni Yemuri Tai right now. I'm I, this is such, this is so grand, is it not? And my goodness, thank you so much for, as I say, mentioning these. And you have, your comment is so enthusiastic about these works. And I'm so touched and moved. Yes, yes. Again, I don't know if these films are available outside of Japan in any capacity. Um, my sense is maybe they're not at the moment, but... If they are, or if anyone has any information about these films uh, that you can help us out with, please let me know in the comment section below. All I do know is just, again, about Japanese DVD releases of these films. So uh, that's where the extent of my knowledge ends. Uh, but if you have any info about this, please let us know. Uh, in any event, the Japanese DVDs do not have any subtitles, and so, as far as I am aware, and my, my understanding. So... Um, uh, so, uh, but they are in Japanese, so, uh, but, um, in any event, that is the, uh, situation with those titles, but as I, uh, well, I would agree with you and say that, uh, they are really great, and I hope that they have or will have, uh, releases outside of Japan in the future. I think this would be great for, for instance, like, Criterion or Arrow or something, if they uh, release these, these would be really exciting and to get more people to watch these films. Wow, wow, that would be a type of dream come true indeed. Uh, to sleep so as to dream. So, um, anyway, thank you so much. Um, uh, is, so, once again, please accept my deepest apologies. Is uh, Iana or Lana, uh, L A N N A or I A N N A. Uh, my dear friend, you are so kind. Your questions and comments are brilliant. You, uh, you are so generous with your uh, compliment uh, towards me and towards this channel. I don't deserve it at all. I don't deserve it. Uh, and you, at the same time, you are so kind and generous with your compliments towards me. And so, um, uh, thank you so much for that. Your enthusiasm has inspired me uh, yet again. And uh, so, I uh, want to thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And my dear friends, uh, thank you so much for watching. And until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well. And please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Thank you so much, as always, for your time. It's very precious, I know. I know you are all very busy. So thank you for taking a moment out of your busy schedule to stop by. Thank you. And so until we meet again, cheers.